I'm Paul Wellens and this is my memory lane, the 2004 Challenge Cup final between St Helens and Wigan at Cardiff Millennium Stadium. And St Helens then to kick off. The Power Gen Challenge Cup 2004 underway. St Helens winners of this cup eight times, their 18th final. Wigan a record 17 times. Yeah, in 2003, uh, it was a pretty poor season for St Helens. It was the first time in, in a good few years we hadn't won anything. and uh, uh, So we really went into that pre-season for 2004 and very focused and determined to, 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 to fix that. It was probably one of the, the toughest cup runs. I think our first game was away at Bradford, who were just the newly crowned world uh, club champions. Uh, and, and then we met Super League teams al along the way. We had two games at Norsley Road against Hull FC and Leeds Rhinos. Uh, and then we played Huddersfield Giants in the semi-final at Warrington to, to, to advance to the final against Wigan. So there was no easy games there. Uh, but I think you know, that kind of built the competition for us. We knew that if we could keep chalking up the big victories, that, that potentially uh, our name could be on the trophy. Unfortunately, I never got to play at the Old Wembley, but I was probably the first cab off the ranking, so to speak, in terms of taking the cup finals to different places. So went to Twickenham in 2001, Murrayfield in 2002, and then obviously got to go to, to Cardiff Millennium Stadium in 2004, and it was just a, an unbelievable atmosphere. I think it's been quite well documented amongst supporters how much of a, you know, probably convenient stadium is with the stadium being bang in the city centre it makes for you know a real a, a real great atmosphere in and around the ground and certainly when the bus is pulling up and you can see the fans lining the streets you know, on the way and it, it, it's, it's a very special moment. Saints Wigan games and Derby games are always high pressured anyway but not none more so than when, when you meet them in, in a big final and uh, there was a lot of pressure going into that day because uh, They'd beaten us in the cup final in 2002 at Murrayfield, so we, we did feel like we owed them one a little bit, and uh, you know we were very determined to, to kind of you know get, get them back, so to speak. What, what, walking out the tunnel that day, uh, it, it, the heat just hit you straight away. How, how warm it was pitch side. I think it was recorded something near 100 degrees pitch side on the day, so uh, you know it, 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 was, it was very intense. For me being a fullback, that was quite good because I knew there was going to be a lot of tired middlemen not in my be able to pick on them. But uh, yeah, the heat, it, that was the first thing that struck me. And, but obviously that, then you've got the, the, the nervous tension and, and what you get with the, the Challenge Cup finals, you have obviously the abide with me and uh, Catherine Jenkins was singing, singing that. And you have a lot, little bit of standing around and waiting. So it's, it's how you deal with that kind of emotionally and you know, keeping your emotions in check so you can be able to perform as soon as that first whistle goes. The lineups on the day, both, both teams were, were, were extremely strong. You know, you, myself up against Chris Redlinski, you had Paul Scholthorpe up against uh, Andy Farrell, Sean Long up against Adrian Lamb. If you're kind of 1, 6, 7 and 9, obviously Terry Newton and Kieran Cunningham have missed them two up against each other as well. You're 1, 6, 7, 9, 30 in the Spania team, you, you, probably, you quite need, you need to perform well at, in big games and uh, thankfully on the day we did. I remember the game starting and I remember just after a couple of minutes, uh, Jason Hooper, he was always renowned, Australian fellow we'd signed, always renowned for putting on kick pressure and, and charging down kicks. And he, he managed to uh, put Chris, uh, a Chris Radlinski kick under a little bit of pressure and Lee Gilmore sco scoots up the, lo the loose ball, I think, and, and ran 50 metres or Willie well, Talal scooped up and ran, give it to Lee Gilmore, he ran 50 metres to score. So we got off to a great start, which is, obviously vitally important in big games. Wigan don't lie down, so they, they got straight back into the game, and I think it was 6-all, and uh, then we you know, we managed to to get another try. And uh, I, I remember just before half-time, we kind of got a bit of luck from a kick, really, and I managed to pick up a loose ball. We got another set of six. Oh, play on. That's back to one, another six tackles. Unfortunate there for Wigan. One minute to half-time. St Helens looking for another score. A couple of players later, the ball moved out to the left edge, and I just played the ball. And I managed to just, you know, get myself back into a decent position, and the ball came back through. I think three or four pair of hands. I think it was Lee Gilmore, Paul Scholthorpe, and then Keith Mason uh, provided the final pass for me to, to go over just just at the side of the sticks. And uh, it was the last play before half time, really, which uh, you know a real crucial time to, to score. Saints wanted another score. Hooper, good ball. Back again, Scholthorpe.
We were 28-10 up, Wigan scored again. Like I said, they weren't going to go away and we knew, we knew they were going to keep playing hard. 28-16 and you've got that doubt in the back of your mind, you need to keep going, keep playing. Uh, and then we managed to go 32-16 up and I remember it getting to about 74, 75 minutes on the clock and we ended up getting a scrum and uh, Martin Gleeson walked over to me and said, we've done it, you know, we've done it. I was like, yeah, you're right, we have. And we had a little smile at each other and uh, kind of knew we were in that moment and we just needed to obviously see out the last few minutes of the game. But uh, in big games like that, you know, to, to get that kind of moment of relief where you can actually enjoy a four or five minute spell of the game and relax and soak up the atmosphere while still playing, it, it's very rare. So when you get the opportunity to do it, you, you enjoy it. It was awesome to, to, to lift the trophy at the end of the game. Uh, I think, you know, that was Scully's first year, Paul Schofield's first year as captain as well. So he got to lift, lift the trophy and, you know, it, it, it's always a special moment. Uh, uh, you know, at the stadium though, you don't quite get to climb the steps like at Wembley, but I don't know if that makes it any less special, uh, uh, you know, and probably what people and most people will tell you who've been fortunate, fortunate enough to, to be in, a, in that position of winning a Challenge Cup final. It's, you know, all that what goes on on the field is unbelievable experience. But something like as simple as the bus trip back the day after can provide just equally as special memories to spend you know four or five hours sat on a bus with with a group of guys you've worked so hard with, just having a few beers and a laugh and a joke and. You know, with some of the characters we had on that bus as well, <laughs> like see Sean Long and stuff like that, and make it a very interesting bus journey home. But uh, it was, you know, it's great moments when 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 you kind of celebrate those types of successes with your teammates as well. I'm Paul Wellens and that was my memory lane of the 2004 Challenge Cup Final.